interesting news to report on. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, Donald Trump got COVID and didn't get COVID. He, he, he recovered in record time, two days. For some reason, no one really cares about whether or not if he's, um, if he's contagious. Um, he's decided to, um, what? I guess he decided to, but they're obviously saying that he didn't discharge himself. But, you know, with conversation with his doctor, they decided it'd probably be best that he go back to the White House. And I guess um, it's just a unique set of experiences, right? He's got COVID during an election year. Um, he's been very boastful about his um, his potential of winning it. He's spoken about, obviously, you know, the rigged uh, ballot ballot uh, elections, what ballot votes, or whatever it may be called. So he's obviously on edge about, you know, about the election coming up. He doesn't feel as confident as he might have maybe felt in the past. Actually, he wasn't even confident in 2016. I think he thought he wasn't going to win anyway. But regardless, it's a unique set of experiences, but it still doesn't leave the American public feeling that confident in their leader and feeling as if like he's got a good handle on the issue, right? You want to, you just want to set a good example, isn't it? That's what you want to do. Fair enough if he's okay. Fair enough if, he, if he's got world-class flipping uh, medical care. Fair enough if he's just one of the rare people who got COVID and nothing really happened, right? Because there are those cases that do exist. There are some people out there who are still having um, some uh, mental issues. Some people are still having some um, sensory issues. You know, the, the, their sense of smell hasn't come back. Um, some people, their sense of taste hasn't come back. Some people are still suffering from fatigue. But there are those that exist who do get COVID, test positive, have no symptoms. And if the long as they quarantine and they test again, they're usually pretty okay to kind of continue on with life. Now, of course, we don't know if there's long-term issues that are going to lay dormant and then arise later on. But for the most part, that does exist. So Trump could be one of those people. But considering his age, considering the fact that he only eats fast food, considering that he's you know quite overweight or you know obese, for, I guess, for his height, in terms of uh, BMI and stuff, it just didn't make any sense. But again, hey, ho, you know what it is. He's got the best care. He got out of hospital, fair enough. But then the one person who I thought would would really, really suffer when he got COVID was Chris Christie. And he announced that he got it himself and then it basically admitted himself to hospital without, you know, much uh, kickback. And this is a report here from NBC New York stating the fact that says, report, Chris Christie knocked back, not knocked down. It says former New Jersey governor Chris Christie knocked up or not knocked down while hospitalized with coronavirus, the Star Ledger reported on Monday. The newspaper economist Tom Moran reported he spoke to the former JP governor for 10 minutes ago um, and Chris Christie sounded carouspy but didn't want to talk about details about his health or his treatment, according to the article, which is which is understandable, right? You should be able to keep your um, you know, your health issues private. But it's just funny. It's just funny, considering that, again, the Republicans, it seemed that from the outside were the ones that were saying it wasn't that big of a deal, which who knows? It might not be a big deal. It might not be a big deal in context, right? Once you start to kind of um, get more information regarding the virus, and unfortunately, it looks like one of those viruses that some people have to pass away just so you can gain a better understanding of it. Some people have to come close to death in order to get a better understanding of it. That may be the case, but the way they treated it beforehand, the way they sort of um, were very resistant to any kind of, um, you know, restrictions in the economy, me the way they're resistant to any kind of freedom of movement is really really odd but obviously makes sense considering it's america considering um, um how highly they hold uh their freedom of choice and all that malarkey right they're, they're a very um independent nation in that regard right even though they're all kind of together in one place they sort of all have their own rules you know own states own individual it's very i won't say individual actually but it's quite that's that's the duality of america it's quite patriotic and it's also individualistic individual individualistic that's the word, right? <laughs> On the same page. But anyway, um, so I understand his need not to kind of divulge it, but it does, you know, it does come across a bit weird that everybody that's got it within the Republican Party so far has been reluctant to share any details regarding their treatment. When you do think to yourself, if people on the left hand, if the people on the left, people on the Democrat side were, um, you know, had contracted coronavirus to this extent, they would be going ham on them on, on Twitter, or on social, or on TV and stuff. You know that would happen. Anyway, it says here, Christie said the virus is scary, of course, and that he is prime target given his weight and history of asthma which is very, very true, right? <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh, yeah, shit. Chris Christie is that really massive rotunda guy, isn't it? And then I remember the epic images of him playing baseball again, not fat shaming or anything, just, you know, again, observation and just, you know, sharing a bit of a chuckle in that regard. But God damn it, man. Like, if ever there was a living, breathing example of a uh, alpha male American man, this is it, right? The, their idea of what alpha males look like in America, right, are either former Navy SEALs or people that look like this. 
And usually people that look like this that walk around schlubby, has his slacks all the way past his belly button, um, you know, has really horrible sandals on. They're usually the guys that, you know, you never know, you know, who owns bloody, you know, GM Motors or something, or he owns, or he's the guy, or he's he's the heir to the throne of a family that invented the bolts that go on the bottom of your sink or some shit like that, right? So like they've got wealth upon wealth, so you can't necessarily talk to them, but God almighty, that body is just like all the way nasty in it. There's just nothing. I've never actually seen a man with like that pouch. Cause you know, that's the one thing that women tend to have a bit of an issue with, right? The pouch. I'm not sure why, maybe it's a hormonal thing. Um, it's a big issue um, with women, you know, in terms of um, working out, in terms of periods, I'm assuming in terms of when you have a baby also getting rid of that little bit there at the bottom. Um, obviously, it might, again, I have no idea why that is personally, but I guess it must be something hormonal. But I've never seen that, you know, kind of pouch thing on a guy like that. It's just kind of epic to see, isn't it? It's really, really bizarre. But again, big up to him for being so comfortable in what he wears and comfortable in his own skin. Same as like a Burt Kreischer, right? In his head, he thinks he looks like, I don't know, he thinks he looks like Russell Westbrook. Do you know what I mean? Like, there is no, there is no uh, shame in his game in that regard. But then the other thing that I remember Chris Christie about was this epic story. Do you remember this, right? This is from, when was this? I think 2017. Yeah, 2017. This flipping epic, epic, epic story of Chris Christie decided to shut down a beach in New Jersey. Um, his state. Um, I don't know why. I'm going to read the article for a reason. Right? He shut it down for some unspecified reason. And then he was photographed, like, enjoying the peach that he shut down for her, for whatever reasons that he shut it down for. And as his article says, he was unrepentant. So this is the article. It says, Chris Christie uh, boldly soaks up rays on beach as he, he shuts the public. It says, um, even for the U.S. state governor with six months left in office, an approval rating of just 15%. That's flipping horrendous, isn't it? Um, and again, you know, typical... I've been there before being a former fat guy, isn't it? Being on the beach, essentially fully clothed with a t-shirt, shorts, and a hat on is mad. First, you order the government... First, you order the government to shut down uh, that clo that closes all the state parks and beaches on the eve of the 4th of July holiday weekend, right? That's one statement. And then secondly, then you take a police helicopter to the coast and spend a good chunk of Sunday soaking up the rays with your family on a prime pristine stretch of sand that, thanks to your order, you entirely have to yourself. However, the New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, was unrepentant. Asked about the reports that his family was staying on the stateside residence in the beach state park while he is, the, the place was closed to the public, Christie first denied he had benefited and said, I didn't get any son what a fucking cock and again it's interesting though i wish someone could make a case study for this especially maybe if it maybe applies to the tories but i don't think it does because i think a lot of working class people here have a lot of you know um are very much against this current tory government they might yeah they might regard themselves as tories or they might you know support the tory party but this actual government that's in charge at the moment now they probably don't have any good things to say about them but I'm really intrigued if somebody, it would be really amazing if somebody in the future would make a documentary or something along the lines or some sort of podcast or whatever it may be detailing how the Republicans, especially the Republicans of this era, the modern era of Republicans, right? The post Tea Party Republicans, how they've somehow managed to convince working class people that they're fighting for them. Like, how did they do that? Like, these guys are like, imagine, this is Chris Christie's home in Jersey, right? Probably one of his homes. Like, it's a beach, what, what do they call it? Beachfront home mansion for the most part with a separate outhouse here mass amounts of parking and legitimately it's a couple of you know when you go in airbnbs and you book an airbnb in a lavish location so when it says oh two minutes away from the beach and you get there and it's like flipping a 10 minute walk or a five minute or a five minute cab ride this is legitimately a two minute walk to the beach right christine blue seas right amazing 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 and again i'd imagine unless you're living on the west coast um it's pretty difficult to get to beaches in the u.s right especially if you're landlocked so he's in the prime location but somehow he represents a party that has somehow managed to convince the working class or the people even the middle class right that they have somehow fighting for their um fighting for their benefit how do they do that i really am curious again if, if I'm many, of my, many of my commentators are a little bit uh, more politically savvy than i am when it comes to u.s politics please let me know in the comments like, how did the republican party convince the working class or the middle class for that regard that they were fighting for them because it doesn't make any sense because this guy isn't right he shut down a beach <laughs> and then decides to enjoy himself not setting any precedent not taking any accountability again it's it's another it's another it's another kind of example you see of it's kind of um uh similar to trump's uh leadership right where you just lead how you lead a company whereas if you're leading a nation it's completely different right when you lead a company you probably can be a bit of a dick and just do what you want and sort of like not 
necessarily you can you can you can if you're leading a company i can assume some I, obviously i think the great the great ceos the ones that go down in history as you know being some of the most influential some of the most important leaders of our time they obviously wouldn't do this but i can i do think if you are a if you are a bit of a cock and you do want to be a bit of a wanker you probably can get away with just you know being a dick to your staff members and then just doing the bare minimum in order to make sure your company is functional right you don't need to uh, setting a good example if anything you know that's not your job in it that's not your role maybe you leave that to your other um subordinates or line managers that work underneath you but as a leader you probably need to do it but when you're working in politics and you're representing your constituents um you have to somehow set a good example in it right just just in general not even like a oh i'm not i'm gonna abstain from this and you know virtue signaling but just you know if you look it for the public you'd assume you, it looks it locked down for you as well but it didn't he said here um told of the existence of aerial photos the governor dressed in shorts and a t-shirt sitting on the beach with his wife mary his son andrew and other family members his spokesman brian murray it's funny right um conceded chris christie was on the beach briefly so he said he wasn't on the beach he didn't get any son and then he's 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 um both person saw it and said he was on there briefly madness but murray insisted he didn't get any sun he was wearing a baseball cap oh my god on saturday chris christie um once uh, the darling of the republican party considered the top contender for the presidency had defended his use of the residents he says that's the way it goes he remarked run for governor and you have the residents okay so that's residents that you get as a governor of new jersey okay cool and again even more so why you shouldn't be on that beach setting in a good example jesus these people are unscrupulous isn't it um on sunday he tried another tact the residence was where my family was sleeping he said so that's where i sleep facing him at the criticism on monday he insisted he was simply sticking to his previously announced holiday plans the media had caught a politician keeping his word christie said i that new jersey had a 120 miles of beaches so no one should be deprived but you closed them though the governor's popularity has peaked <laughs> at more than 70 percent when he was elected a second term four years ago and he won widespread praise when he was handing of hurricane sandy or oh, i remember that and then somehow um, but they plummeted after it emerged that his then aides had played a key role in the scandal of the lane closures in George Washington Bridge and have fallen even further since he was pulled out of the US presidential race in February last year and endorsed Trump. So that's actually a good thing for once, right? He didn't get, um, his popularity didn't sink because of a scandal because sometimes I think politicians maybe especially the the unscrupulous ones right they deserve their day in court quote unquote right so he didn't get brought down by a scandal or anything salacious he got brought down because he he was responsible for putting in place shitty policies that negatively affected you know parts of the american public right that's a good thing you want your politicians to go out that way so that he knows he's always disgraced which is why you don't really hear much about him right he kind of whimpers in the corner makes some statements here and there but he usually keeps his head down because he knows you know most for the most part people don't really rate him but god almighty what a dude isn't it and this guy has covid now at the moment uh it says, so it comes back to the covid article it says christy i'm um, called um rub to, uh, called to rub Moran's nose in a mistake he had made stemming from Christie's 2012 visit in Jordan according to the newspaper so for now folks let's not worry too much the man is knocked back but he's not no okay oh cool he's talking about Moran okay fair enough um Andrew Christie the former governor's son who works in the scouting for New York Met said his father kind of remains in COVID isolation from a room in the hospital and is doing well Christie announced Saturday morning that he tested positive the day after Donald Trump was on diagnosis he was with the president at for the debate for the debate prep in Cleveland on Tuesday and at the Rose Garden event where Trump named Judge Amy Coney Barrett as a pick for Supreme Court on December 26. Later Saturday, Christie said that he had gone to hospital for precautionary re reasons, including his history of asthma. Imagine having asthma and going to an event in general and not wearing a face mask, even if you're on out, even if you're outdoors. It's just some so many people are just like so reckless with their health, which is okay. I think that's okay. I'm gonna say I think that's fine. I think we've got enough information at that at the moment that we should not be spending time trying to convince or educate people who don't want to be educated or convinced in any kind of way of shape or form i think you're allowed to decide hey i'm i would rather get it and live my life and you're us you're also allowed to hunker down at home and you know not go outside and order everything through postmates or uber eats you're allowed to do either one i think that's fine enough and then of course if you contract the virus or if you are, you know, if, if you didn't turn psychotic from staying indoors, you have to live with the consequences. That's it. I just don't hear people complaining about it, right? Or saying, oh, I told you so. It's like, no, you didn't tell them anything. He was never going to change his way, right? Imagine being, you know, extremely, what, what's your feeling? Extremely obese as Chris Christie is, having asthma and whatever other ailments that he might have being, you know, being that size. Because I know having, being a form of fatty myself, other ailments that kind of come along with it. And also not taking COVID seriously. You just, you know, you've only got yourself to blame in that regard. So it is what it is. 